Good morning, everybody. Good, good morning, everyone. So here we are again, hosting our daily devotional. It's a privilege for me and Albertiza to get in connect with you and allowing you to be blessed by our brothers and sisters. So this morning we have Dick Shamins sharing the word and Jackie Elmore sharing a beautiful song. Let me say, let me say something about um, uh, when we, uh, about the internet, sometimes you got problems. So we, as you know, we depend on a good internet signal and from here, from my, from my house and from your house. So if for any reason the image frozen, so you can actually uh, reload the page and I'm sure we will be back as a normal. But if, if um, something can happen and, and we, we will be back uh, quickly, as soon as possible. So, so I'm sure that this morning everything will be all right, okay? So let's pray asking God to bless us and allowing us to uh, uh, have a beautiful and blessed day. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray asking God to bless you in this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So Lord, we thank you very much for the way you've been working our lives. Thank you very much, Lord, in the way you've been blessing us. Thank you, in a way, every morning from Monday and Friday, you've been allowing us to be here sharing uh, scripture, praying together, and also worship you together, Lord. Thank you for my brothers and my sisters who, are, who have been blessing us and, and sharing God's word with us. So I pray for Jake's message this morning, asking you, Holy Spirit, to speak to our hearts through his life, through his ministry. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have you noticed that um, in the past few weeks, we've all had a, a lot of time to sit and think, and I've been doing some. I'm an old man now, and I've been pondering about what what really matters in, in my life. And I've come to the conclusion that the most important thing for me is that I should become like Jesus. I've been reading in Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, and he makes a lot of this. He, he says, for example, that we all reflect the Lord's glory and are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. And uh, a bit later on in his letter, he says, I hope that you'll put up with a little foolishness. He says, um, please put up with me, because you see, I'm jealous for you with a, with a godly jealousy. I promised you to one husband, to Christ, so that I might present you as a pure virgin to him. But of course, you remember the story of Corinth, and you know that things are sadly wrong there. He says, for example, I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the snake's cunning, your minds may be somehow led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. And right at the end of the letter, he said, I'm afraid that when I come, I fear there will be discord and jealousy and fits of rage and selfish ambition and slander and gossip and arrogance and disorder. He can't wait to get there, can he? And then he comes to his last instructions, and they're these. Dear brothers and sisters, as I close my letter, be joyful, grow to maturity, encourage each other, live in harmony and peace, and the, the God of love and peace will be with you. Now that's asking an awful lot of a church like the Corinthian church with discord and jealousy and rage and selfish ambition there. How could they possibly meet those instructions from Paul? Or if you like, how can they, how can they as a community become like Jesus, to be transformed, to be transformed into his likeness? But it's almost as though 
Paul anticipates this question and gives the answer in the very last words in the letter. And this is the verse that has been probably quoted more than any other verse in the Bible. I don't think it's John 3.16. I don't think it's for God so loved the world. I don't think it's the Lord's Prayer, our Father in heaven. I think it's this verse. The great the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever be with you all now this is this is quite different than any of the other of Paul's blessings at the end of his letters his most usual blessing was the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you but this verse this is Trinitarian it's the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ it's the love of God and it's the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that's the key to becoming like the Lord Jesus. The grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It wouldn't be a bad idea if we just sat and reminded ourselves about this grace. Paul had already talked about it to the Corinthian Christians earlier on in his letter. He said, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ who though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. The grace of our Lord Jesus. John Bunyan wrote this when he was completely overwhelmed by the, the grace of our Lord Jesus. In fact, he runs out of words, you can tell. Listen to this. You son of the blessed, what grace was manifest in your condescension? Grace brought you down from heaven. Grace stripped you of your glory. Grace made you poor and despicable. Grace made you bear such burdens of sin, such burdens of sorrow, such burdens of God's curse as are unspeakable. O oh, Son of God, grace was in all your tears. Grace came bumbling, bu bubbling out of your side with your blood. Grace came forth with every word from your sweet mouth. Grace came out where the whip smote you, where the nails and the spear piece pierced you. Oh, blessed Son of God, here is grace indeed, unsearchable riches of grace, unthought of riches of grace, grace to make angels wonder, grace to make sinners happy, grace to astonish demons. You get the drift? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. But then Paul says, the love of God. It wouldn't be a bad idea if we reminded ourselves of what this love is like. It's the Father's love. Do you remember what John said in his first letter? Behold, what manner of love. See what great love the, the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. It's an eternal love. When God spoke to Jeremiah, he said, I've loved you. I've loved you with an everlasting love. And I've drawn you with unfailing kindness. It's a colossal love. In the Psalms we read, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love to those who fear him. Do you remember, do you remember the lines that were supposedly written on the wall of a mental hospital by one of the patients? Could we with ink the ocean fill? And were the skies of parchment made? Were every blade on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade? To write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretch from sky to sky. For its Father's love, its eternal love, its colossal love, its discerning love. It's a love that knows what's best for his children, that's why he doesn't always answer our prayers in the way that we want him to. It means that he will also, when necessary, discipline us. The writer to the Hebrews makes this very plain. Have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline. Do not lose heart when he rebukes you. 
because the Lord disciplines the ones he loves and chastens everyone he accepts as a son. And then it's also a faithful love. This is what God called it when he spoke to Isaiah. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love, which I promise to David. It's a forgiving love. Oh, this is John 3.16, of course, yeah. God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. Paul put it like this, God demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And then Paul comes on finally to the fellowship, the fellowship of the, the Holy Spirit. And it wouldn't be a bad idea if we spent time today reminding ourselves of the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus said, it's good for you that I go away, because unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I do go, I will send him to you. What did Jesus say about the Holy Spirit? You find this in John 14, 15, 16. He calls the Holy Spirit, depending on which translation you use, counselor, comforter, helper, advocate, strengthener. But in every case, it implies someone who is going to come alongside us for help. At the time of the Lord Jesus, the word was used in a variety of ways. It was used to describe someone who was called to give witness in a law court in somebody's favor. It describes a, a lawyer called in to plead the cause of someone who was under a serious charge. He might be an expert called in to give advice in some difficult situation. He might be a person called in when, for example, a, a company of soldiers were dis depressed and dispirited to put new courage into their minds and hearts. But whatever, it always applied to someone who was going to come alongside in time of trouble or need. And Jesus said about him, he'll teach you all things. He'll be with you forever. He will remind you of everything I've said to you. He will testify about me. He will speak plainly about me. He will guide you into all truth. He won't speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. Oh, and he'll glorify me. Going back to Paul's final instructions to the Corinthians. Be joyful. Grow into maturity. Be an encourager. Live in harmony. Live in peace. Well, the fact is that if you and I want to be joyful, then we need the ministry of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. If we want to grow into maturity, if we want to become like Jesus, if we want the ministry of encouragement, if we want to live in harmony with our brothers and sisters, we need the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And it's for us today to claim for ourselves. So if you like, let's say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. God bless you.
Thank you once more for being connected with us. Um, I hope God bless the rest of your day. Uh, just a quick reminder that uh, this coming Sunday, we will continue our series, Seeing Life Differently. Graham Poland will be sharing his second message. So maybe uh, remind Graham in your prayer. So we hope... Uh, God, we will speak to people this coming Sunday. And as always, we've been repeating this here. We want you to see uh, salvation happen. And uh, we want you to uh, see the Holy Spirit blessing people, touching their hearts. And many people have been connected with us. So, yeah, again... Yeah. Thank you. We hope to see you tomorrow, half past 10. Okay? God bless you. Have a nice day and thank you very much. Yeah, bye. Again. Bye.